All right, the large intestine, we are not breaking it down into its parts. We're just looking at it in general, and I'm going to tell you the uh, how I tell if I'm in the large intestine, and it's a relative feature. Most of these features are relative, which means that's one of the reasons why I think histology is frustrating for people, because it is relative. Depending on the critter that you pick, how long are the villi, how many glands do you see? Are there really billions of pyrus patches, like what you would expect, or are there fewer pyrus patches? And that's just normal variation. You're going to see some differences like that. In the large intestine, you are going, you're going to see lymphatic nodules. You're just not going to see billions of them. And the key that we're going to look for is goblet cells. Goblet cells in the epithelial tissue. Why? Just think on that little functional problem for a second. Like, why would we have billions of goblet cells in your large intestine? Remember those goblet cells? They look a little something, something like, like a this. And what did they do? They're embedded in with all the rest of the simple columnar epithelium. Yeah, this is actually a really pretty drawing right now, so I'm going to keep going. What do they make? Holy mucus barfage. Mucus. You are absorbing water in the large intestine. You're sucking the water out of your doo-doo. And if you do not want your doo-doo to get stuck in there, you better make some mucus so it gets a little slippery so you can get it out. Right. Makes complete functional sense why we would see such a structure in the large intestine. The last piece of histology that we have is the pancreas. We're going to look at pancreatic histology as well, and hopefully it will be relatively easy to do.